The secret to project stability, flow. In this video, I'm gonna discuss what to keep your eye on in construction and why it's so important. So would you like to know how to identify flow in construction, how you can create flow, and what to focus on between work and resources? Well, we're gonna cover all that right now. To start out, this is what I wanna do. I wanna go through a little bit of an analogy. This is my favorite one of all time. And it talks about the concept of throughput. So the example that I'm going to draw here is of a little manufacturing plant, okay? And I want to know how much material is going to be put through from start to end for a certain grouping of products. And that's throughput. And so the pieces of equipment will be drawn here with these little boxes. And I, I love this analogy. And, and each of these uh, pieces of equipment are in a single line, okay? So the product fl flows from line to line all the way out to the end. So we're gonna do a little bit of an analysis here and figure out what's going on. So let's say that this piece of equipment can do four parts per hour, four parts per hour, four parts per hour, two parts per hour, four parts per hour, four parts per hour, okay? So let's go ahead and analyze this. Let's say that you have this factory working at 100% efficiency, meaning everybody's doing everything they can, what would your rate of throughput be? So I'll write TP, and most people would say, well, that's two, that's your bottleneck, that's two, okay? So we're on the same page. So if I was like, okay, well, what can we do to get this thing to flow? A lot of times people will say, all right, well, you could either replace this equipment and make it a four, so I'll just do that. Or you can, you can add another piece of equipment and go ahead and get that to flow, but you basically split the product from this machine into two, and it goes into two, two parts per hour items, and you're able to flow. So let's just say, what, you know, what would your throughput be for that, okay? It would be at a general rate of four parts per hour. So we're good to go. All right, I love that, we're doing good. All right, so what else could we do to get it to flow? Let's say that this up here, there's no way that we could make the equipment go faster and there's no way we can get a second one. Let's say it's just a unique thing that cannot be adjusted. What could we do? Well, after a little bit of uh, cajoling, typically teams will say, well, you could slow everything else down to two, okay? And then you would have two, 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 two. And then I asked the question, well, what would the throughput be for that? Okay, well, Jason, it's obviously the throughput for that one is two. Okay, totally good. We're on the same page. When we look at this, we need to analyze which one we like better, okay? Uh, but we need to know some facts here first. The truth is that this first one up here, when we said two, that was not right. That was misleading. It's anywhere from 1.2 to 1.8 parts per hour because if everybody's working at full efficiency, then you have inventory stacking up over here, which, create, which takes extra labor to manage, and you're probably taking labor from other locations or from here to actually come get this, which slows down the throughput of the entire system. So now not going at the same speed is a big problem because you have a buildup of overproduced materials, which cre creates excess inventory, which has to be transported, which creates motion, which leads to defects, which then leads to overprocessing, waiting, and not using the genius of the team was the cause of it, right? So this first scenario where we said, everybody just go as fast as they can, that was actually the lowest production rate. So we would either want to fix the bottleneck or slow everything else down to the bottleneck, but we would never, ever, 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 ever want to rush and push. Now, when we look at this, um, you are either gonna have to get another resource or you're going to have to level this out and have these machines work 30% of the time. Here's the key concept, that you're better off flowing either by having additional resources or slowing down versus rushing and pushing and panicking. So we should be identifying the flow, not whether or not our workers are busy. So this is usually, if I'm in 
a classroom where I'm worried about getting pitchforked by people because they're like, no, Jason, that can't be true. We want all workers busy. Well, hold on. That's not what the data shows. If the workers are all busy and the equipment's all working at full efficiency, you have a less you have a smaller throughput rate than you do with the other ones. So it's either better to get an additional resource or slow down all of the equipment. These people are just like uh, waiting and preparing and doing lean implementations 50% of the time. So we never want to focus on do we have resource efficiency only or are workers busy? What we're worried about in construction and in manufacturing is, is the product flowing? So this is the key to everything that we have in construction. The other thing that I wanna show you is an example that I showed you in a different video is that when it looks like, what it looks like in construction is that you have zones, okay? and your workers have to go through the zone from zone to zone to zone. So it's not the product that moves by uh, machines, it's machines and workers that move through the product. So if you're mapping this out and you say, okay, uh, I've got a schedule that's time on the top, location on the left, I have one, two, three zones. Okay, one, uh, two, three zones, and let's say you had one, two, three trades that go through here. If you mapped out, okay, this first one takes two hours, uh, the next one takes six and the third one takes two hours. You can start to map this out and see that you have a problem with the your flow because this is going faster than this and you can still go ahead and look at and optimize your uh, bottlenecks by either splitting this in two or adding additional resources to get it to flow or slowing the rest of these down with the others. So manufacturing and construction are literally the same and we've got to focus on flow, not whether or not people are busy. So let me show you a couple of ways that you can look, look at this, okay? So let's say that you are in a hospital, okay? So you've got uh, different rooms, whatever you want to look at, however you want to look at it, and you need to identify what is your flow unit in a hospital, right? So you want a patient to be able to come schedule an appointment and go from area to area as fast as they can. The patient is what flows in a hospital. So if you wanted to map that out from a scheduling standpoint, you would literally put time on the top and on the left, you would literally put these different rooms so or, or the steps. You could do the initial call, uh, the appointment, the, the check-in, uh, being seen by a doctor, testing, okay, and then treatment, okay? And what you would do is you would map this out and you would see how your patient is flowing or either not flowing through that system, okay? So you would see the movement. What happens when you have a time by location or and real quick i'm going to get into something even more deep or in this case value adding unit so it's going to be the value adding unit you're able to see motion or the flow here okay and this is actually the value receiving unit the important thing behind this is that then you can map this out with the patient behind that one to see if we have flow and start optimizing your bottlenecks. So my point here is that it's not time by location when you're doing a hospital, it's time by uh, value adding unit. But the bottom line over here, it's always what is stationary, okay? That's what you're always gonna see in the column and you're always gonna see over here what moves. So that's a manufacturing example with a different flow unit. Let's go ahead and do construction where you have your uh, zones okay and you are wanting to flow from zone to zone to zone in your schedule you have time on the top and on the left uh, what you have again is the fixed unit uh, but this one is the value receiving unit this time but it is what's fixed okay um, it's the actual zone itself okay so you would have zones number one, two, three, whatever the grouping is within the phase. And then you would actually see the movement of the trade. So you're gonna to start to see the trade flowing in this direction, whatever is going on. So this is the uh, flow unit, okay? 
all right? And this actually happens to be the value adding unit. So I just want you to know that on this left column, it's always what's fixed. In the center, it's always what your flow unit is. But on both sides, you could have the value adding unit or the value receiving unit either way. And on this side, again, the same thing, the value adding unit, the value receiving unit. It's not important which one of these this is, it's whether or not it's fixed or the flow unit. Then the reason this is so important, going back to the example, is just like with the patients, this time with the trades, you can see how it interacts with other trades in the system and you can make sure that they're either, uh, you're either optimizing your bottlenecks or you're slowing everyone down to go the same speed and the same distance apart and actually flow through the system. So I've given you those two examples. Let me just show you now, like in a car manufacturing plant, you'd see time on the top, the stations, and uh, on the left, this is what's fixed and your car flowing through. If you were doing construction, again, that's trade zones, your trades are flowing through. In design, you could have time on the top and your work packages on the left and your uh, tasks running through. And then I'll give you just two more examples over here. Like we talked about in a hospital, it's time by uh, treatment areas and you would see the patient moving through, okay? And then uh, one thing that I really like, which is neat, if you're doing modular or some types of manufacturing, it's time on the top, but you have to decide, am I going to move the modular units through fixed locations in the facility, or am I gonna move workers through fixed modular locations that are stationary in the facility? So your first thing is, what do you want to flow? and you map that out and then whatever's fixed, you'll put on the left. So this is really key. Once you actually start to see this, and this is the last thing that I'll say, how your flow interacts with other, either products or trades in this case, you'll see if you have a balanced system. And as a general reminder, what I want you to know is that you're gonna map that flow unit uh, for construction in your phase for the actual delivery of your product, for the fabrication of your product, and for design. So again, design, your fabrication, delivery, obviously there's a buffer here in the middle, and then your construct or build. So uh, you uh, getting a good flow mapped out for each of these will enable you to create an entire system and hit your earliest possible end date. So this was just a taste. We're gonna turn this into a Canva graphic that I know you're gonna love, but I highly encourage you to map flow for every production system and then network those production systems together so that you can flow and have the best possible end date. I hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.